It's Monday. It's August 12th. And the word of the day is consulting, which means acting stupidly together. Huh. Used in a sentence, we all have a job at a consulting firm. Yeah. <laughs> we do. And by listening, you're getting a stool sample. So, oh, yeah. you know. oh, All right. I'm No Illusions. <laughs> yeah, I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Tim Walls is proud of you, slugger. Eli texts us in an attempt to get a special dispensation to say a slur word on the air. <laughs> and despite being part Oompa Loompa and part cotton candy, Donald Trump is baffled by the existence of multiple races. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, little USA, USA chant. I believe we won the Olympics. I think so. That was pretty exciting. Any favorite moments? Uh, obviously, the part where Eli dressed up as an Australian chick and snuck into the breakdancing competition, I would say. <laughs> uh, she has a PhD in breakdancing, and if that is not a summary of <laughs> arts academia today, nothing ever will be. <laughs> Oh, in our lead story tonight, Kamala Harris looks to have absolutely nailed the first big decision of her presidential candidacy in selecting the very concept of folksy avuncularity as her running mate. <laughs> right. Uh, she found that in the form of Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. This is a man who I barely even mentioned two weeks ago when we were discussing the VP frontrunners, but one who has proven to be an effective attack dog and an Internet darling. Right. Like, I don't know what the opposite of finding a video of you attacking childless cat ladies is, but it may very well be that adorable picture of Tim Walls holding the piglet at the state fair. Oh, the piglet. Oh. I love that picture. He's so happy. The piglet and Tim Walls. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So a bunch of MAGA idiots with big followings, they keep trying to post embarrassing photos about Tim Walls, but there's nothing to work with. So they're just putting up wholesome family pictures <laughs> and even their own army of trolls keep being like hey man love your bigot work um what am i looking at <laughs> i don't get what you've yeah what are you saying i really do one guy with like six hundred thousand followers did exactly that and then one of his fanboys posted looks normal what's the problem here <laughs> and the guy responded just sharing We'll let others find problems if there are oh. any. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I heard someone say that Tim Walls is the dad Fox News stole from us, uh -huh. and I'm going to think about that 11 times a day every day until I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, not everybody is thrilled about the ascendancy of Tim Walls. Uh, I, he, most notably, of course, the Divan Don Juan himself, J.D. Vance. <laughs> the Chase Lounge Lizard was apparently sad that his favorability was minus nine and Walls' was plus 11. So he went on the attack. Specifically, the Canapé Casanova. Sorry, I'll stop. I just, I can't. <laughs> Don't you dare stop. Specific Don't you dare stop. <laughs> the Davin no, actually, Porker. Out, so, yeah, there, there you go. go. <laughs> Specifically, the, the Chesterfield Fugger. Molesterfield. <laughs> <laughs> Well All done, I had sir. was love seat lover, and I yeah, sh no, no, should have no. closed on the three. All right. So specifically, the couch fucker accused Walls of stolen valor, or actually, he accused him of something else, but then called it stolen valor because he's an idiot talking to idiots, and what terms mean doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, Noah's going to explain the whole thing, podcast listener, but he might as well have accused Tim Walls of being a member of the Viet Cong. Yeah, really? Yeah, so the whole thing starts with a video that the Harris campaign put out where Walls is talking about gun control, and he says, quote, we can make sure that these weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at, end quote. God, you can just feel the folksy avuncularity in the, like, preposition at the end there and everything. Anyway, um... The, the phrasing is deceptive, right? Tim Walls never carried a weapon in war. What he meant to say was in the military, obviously, but the phrasing matters, and that left him open for attack, and Vance pounced like somebody just left him alone with a love seat. He responded, <laughs> quote, Well, I wonder, Tim Walls, when were you ever in war? When was this? Okay. End quote. All right, well, uh, as long as we're being official, fucking J.D. Vance, thanks to sovereign 
uh, maritime bird law, Washington, <laughs> D.C. is technically part of Atlantis, and therefore none of the wars are actually wars. There are yeah. wars. So, yeah, Read an so, yeah. admiralty, idiot. <laughs> Now, if that's where it ended, it actually would have been a semi-effective attack, except the part where it highlights Tim Walz's common sense position on gun control that well over half of Americans agree with. But, of course, it didn't end there. Vance went on to exaggerate the hell out of the attack, later adding, quote, What was this weapon that you carried into war, given that you abandoned your unit right before they went to Iraq? And he has not spent a day in a combat zone. What are you doing there? What bothers me about Tim Walls <laughs> is that stolen valor garbage, end quote. Okay, what bothers me about J.D. Vance is not knowing how given works right? in a sentence <laughs> or how to stay in second person without <laughs> drifting <laughs> off into third person and getting lost by the third clause you did <laughs> and then just putting a question mark at the end because right. you had no idea what to do. What the fuck was that? Now, to be clear, what the Tim fuck are Walls they doing at Yale? Didn't he go to Yale? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Now, to be clear, Tim Walls did not abandon his fucking unit before they went to Iraq. He retired after 24 years in the military to run for Congress. Chicken. Yeah, he actually he reached the normal retirement at 20 years when he had signed on for it, and then he re-enlisted after 9-11. Uh, and, and then he put in for his retirement well before his unit got called up. So that's complete and demonstrable bullshit. But that's also not what stolen valor means, right? Stolen valor is a term for people who lie about their military medals or, or what rank they achieved or what service they performed in the military. Retiring before deployment wouldn't be stolen valor, even if he intentionally did it to get out of deployment. Uh, and, and if that seems pedantic to you, it's probably because you don't appreciate what a serious charge stolen valor is among military veterans. Yeah. Convicted rapist Tim Walls, by which I mean he cut in the congressional lunch line that yeah, one right. time. Yes, ex pretty much. Now, of course, uh, this term was later backfilled with a more definitionally accurate accusation, but not a more factually accurate one. Uh, namely, that he said he was a command sergeant major, which is the highest enlisted rank, apparently, uh, but his retirement papers list him as a master sergeant, which is a slightly lower rank. Uh, and apparently that's like a weird minutia about whether he completed the academic requirements to retire at that rank. But... He did serve as a command sergeant major. Nobody is questioning that at all. Or like, there's no legitimate question about that at all anyway. The discrepancy is some bureaucratic bullshit about what benefits he's got or whatever and has nothing at all to do with the man's valor. Okay, um, hey, couch fucker, maybe stop worrying about stolen valor. Focus on stolen valor. Yes! <laughs> Seriously, man, you wrote a book about how you couldn't cut it in Lucinda's childhood. Yes. And you're getting your pointing fingers out like, yes. ah! <laughs> so, yeah, just probably shut the fuck up about our different services. So, histories. yeah, so it, it's too early to tell if the accusation is going to stick. I know the timing of his retirement has been hurled at him several times in previous elections, and he won all of those. So I, I, I feel like probably not. And I'm I'm not sure it's a great strategy to make military service the centerpiece of a candidacy for a draft dodger, right? Like, if you asked about this, I feel like Tim Walsh should just tell people he retired because his bone spurs flared up and then <laughs> move on. Uh, and, and speaking of how quickly those bone spurs can sneak up and get you, it's time for a word from this week's first sponsor, Trust and Will. And then real magic books for everybody. Okay, again, that sounds like a terrible idea, man. Hey, fellas, what you doing? Yeah, so Eli's planning to drop all of his stuff out of a helicopter when he dies. Well, yeah, that sounds like a terrible idea. Why would you do that? Oh, well, I can't afford a fancy will from big time suspenders wearing lawyers. So I figure the best I can do is, you know, give Anna a heads up where the helicopter's going to be. And, you know, that'll give her kind of dibs after a lifetime of love has earned her her old age. You know, do we think she's going to be old or she's, I'm older? Guys, okay. guys, making a will has never been easier thanks to trust and will. And right now, our listeners can get 10 percent off at trust and slash skeptocrat. Making a will on the internet? Is that actually valid? It sure is. Each will or trust is state-specific, legally valid, and customized to your needs. And it's easy to do? Absolutely. Their simple step-by-step -step process guides you from start to finish, one question at a time, and live customer support is available through phone, chat, and email. It's true. Anna and I used Trust and Will when they became a sponsor, and it was so easy, I immediately used it to help create a Trust and Will for my mom. 
Creating your will or trust doesn't have to be a chore. Protect what matters to you most in minutes at trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat and get 10% off plus free shipping. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. All right, Noah, thanks. Of course, now I rented that helicopter for nothing. Well, not for nothing. I was thinking we could drop pea balloons on Thomas's house. Oh, yeah, let's do pea balloons on Thomas's house. Oh, nice. And we're back. Next up in headlines in liver pull it together news. Those of you who have already heard reoccurring guest masochist Michael Marshall on this podcast already know that the people of Liverpool are just plain better than us in almost every way. They have free health care. They still use the term boss to mean something is good or cool. And when bigots use tragedy to stir up violence, they promptly tell them to fuck themselves. Which is exactly what happened this week as the city came out in solidarity and support of their migrant population after a bunch of racist assholes tried to blame them for a stabbing they didn't even do. Okay. I mean, even if they did do the stabbing, I feel like Liverpool would be cool about it, right? Like, if it's racist assholes or immigrants and some, I don't know, light to medium stabbing. I know what side I'm on, oh, and Jesus. I'm guessing Liverpool agrees, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so as, as I'm sure most of you know by now, a miserable piece of shit stabbed a bunch of kids at a Taylor Swift-themed dance class last week, which, can I say, weird news trend we're experiencing this last month. Between this and the Ariana Grande concert and the foiled terrorist attacks this week, I mean, it's obvious that the real terrorist is coming from the pop stars, right? Sometimes it feels like we're in act one of a like girl boss pop star Voltron movie. It's not often enough, but sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, yeah, exactly. Anyways, despite the fact that the guy who did the stabbing is from fucking Wales and his parents are from Rwanda, far right assholes have been violently blaming immigrants for the last week, harassing and assaulting people they perceive to be foreign, damaging property and listing so-called migrant allies for targeting in cities across the country, including Liverpool. It's like their very own Charlottesville, but with somehow even less melanin. Yeah, it's mm. pale. The the tiki flashlights are weird, for sure. Yeah, they're <laughs> better in the fog, you know, better in the fog. And I know what you're thinking. Eli, this sounds like America, right? A, a lone idiot hurts people. Right-wingers blame their usual victims. How is that different than the United States? Well, I'll tell you how. Because this past Wednesday, the city of Liverpool turned out for peace. Patrolling the streets to stop violence and protect a targeted migrant charity because they are, in fact, quite boss. Well, to be fair, they did that in Charlottesville, too. A chick got run over doing that shit, actually. But Yeah, yeah. Well, so, yeah, a bit of good news for our British listeners in sore need of it this week. And a good reminder that one of these years when we go to QED, we're not coming back. Especially because I just learned that Manchester has a pug cafe this oh, shit. year. What I'm saying is I might actually not be at the convention this year, but I'll, I'll be at right. You'll be same, checked in. Same. Pretty excited the about hotel. that. Mm-hmm. They have a ball pit. Yes. Oh, fuck, yeah. I should also point out that when Eli says we're not coming back, he means we're, we'd be staying on purpose, not being murdered by immigrants. I just I go, like I know how this gets like good uh, clarification. out of control. Yeah. I'm open to any of it. Here and there. And in putting the as fuck in gaff news, <laughs> Donald Trump spent most of the last two weeks learning some fascinating new details about race and about the nature of (laughs) numbers larger than one. That's where they get tricky. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I should probably clarify which example of that I'm talking about. I wish you would. Crazy as it might sound, he did the exact same thing on multiple occasions during that two-week span. And we're going to talk about one of them now and one of them later. The one we're talking about now happened during a convention in Chicago for the National Association of Black Journalists. And to their credit, those journalists happily allowed Donald Trump to attend that event, and they generously handed him plenty of rope when he arrived, with which he promptly hung himself. I remember seeing an article about the event ahead of time that said, Donald Trump to attend Q&A during gathering of black journalists. And I was like, fuck yeah, he is. Right? Wow, (laughs) gonna watch that. Trump got a question about whether he agreed with other Republicans that Kamala Harris is a DEI hire. And Trump's answer was, is she black now? Are you allowed to switch? Okay, and I'm not (laughs) exaggerating. That was the content. Here's the exact words. 
quote, she was always of Indian heritage and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know. Is she Indian or is she black? Also, can someone take that knife away from Tyler? He's my ride home and he's trying to do the <laughs> yeah. thing again. Yeah, no, you, you kind of thought we were beyond being shocked by his idiocy, but the deafening gasps in that audience when he said that shit sure suggested otherwise. Of professional journalists. Amazing. Yeah, These are <sighs> people trained to keep yes. their cool, and they were like, fuck your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that went very badly. And even Donald Trump, idiot that he is, he could tell something was wrong. So he followed that up. He tried to backpedal, and he said, I respect either race but she obviously doesn't because she was indian all the way and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went she became a black person and then he added i think somebody should look into that too (laughs) not clear what looking into that would be what he's hoping russia will leak her 23 and me results (laughs) (laughs) well okay none of us would be surprised to find out that he thinks a race card is a real thing that african americans have right (laughs) like maybe he wants them to check her black person id yeah not clear like a detective of race holds up a magnifying glass i have no idea we also got to watch donald trump physically act out the concept of twitchy racist sociopath like Like he was doing an improv game and he asked for a prompt from the audience and somebody yelled out, white fragility. (laughs) Okay, sorry. Once again, probably not clear which moment I'm talking about. Again, I do need (laughs) you to The one I'm thinking of was a response to a question from Rachel Scott of ABC News. She started by giving a long list of extremely racist moments from Donald Trump. And then she asked why he thinks a black person would vote for him. And Trump immediately (laughs) just started shaking with rage. And he said... Well, first of all, which is not a good start. Doesn't matter what you're going to do next. You're already twitchy. And you said, first of all, like that. He said, well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question. So in such a horrible manner, you don't even say, hello, how are you? Which I don't think that's how like journalists do things. When they nope, ask you questions in a Q&A. Yeah. Every Trump, Q&A question going? starts with, hey, what's up? <laughs> Oh, no, I get I get another one, though. I get another question. Oh, get right? another that doesn't one. count? Okay, okay that doesn't count. Bonus, you're a racist. <laughs> <laughs> you're a racist? Yeah. So after a bunch more absurd indignation, Trump eventually claimed that he's done more for the black community than Abraham Lincoln. He said that before. Yep. And that was followed by another cringe from the entire audience. It was truly breathtaking we should use the audio of that cringe at gitmo it was rough obi-wan kenobi heard a thousand thousand voices cry out in unison (laughs) (laughs) no but i will say that's gonna be his answer there that's gonna be my answer next time somebody asks if i swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth Right. Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question in such a horrible manner. Oh, I thought you were going to say you've done more for the black community than April. <laughs> Wink at the black people on the jury. You're right. <laughs> it's a reference. It's fine. I did kill that guy. <laughs> and uh, of course, Trump made sure to mention one of his favorite other talking points. The idea that immigrants are, quote, taking black jobs, which is both a lie and a slur at the same time. The follow-up question was, hey, uh, Donald, what's a black job? You just said that. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? And Trump responded, quote, a black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is. And what do you mean by black job? You said black job. Yeah. (laughs) He goes home wondering if there's some awesome cousin of blowjobs and hand jobs that he's never tried. (laughs) I knew Stormy was holding back. (laughs) So meanwhile... Kamala Harris did a bunch of campaign events using her extremely unfair double the amount of races that you're allowed to have. And she's currently (laughs) leading in the national polls by about three points. It's like maybe four in Michigan because she's juicing and I support it. Fuck yeah. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And then on Thursday, I do lats. I can see. I can really see that in your lats. Yeah, and then I cry for a bit, you know, between sets. Okay, well, now now that's sad. Hey, guys, what you doing? 
Oh, hey, Noah, just uh, telling Eli about my workout routine. Yeah, but it seems like his mental health is the spot that needs work. Yeah, if only there was a gym for your brain. You know what I'm saying? Well, Heath, there is. Have you tried therapy? Therapy? I thought that was just for crazy people. Not at all. Therapy is a huge part of a healthy upkeep for your brain. And if you're considering therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. But what if I can't afford therapy? BetterHelp has financial aid available to help make therapy affordable for everyone. Plus, you can use HSA or FSA dollars on it. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. Awesome. You hear that? We can cut all my crying sets. Okay, but now what are you going to do during your workouts on Wednesdays? Um, yeah. Oh, more pee balloons on Thomas's house? Yes! He leaves his windows open a lot. Right? You'd think you'd learn. Yeah. You'd think. And we're back. Next up in headlines in abracadaver news tonight. At the risk of giving the fallen gong people more fuel for their organ harvesting paranoia, I'm going to cover a story about prosecutors in northern China charging dozens of suspects in a years long scheme to steal dead bodies marked for cremation and sell them to the disturbingly large number of Chinese companies that need extra dead people. Ah, see, I knew necromancy must be involved in those fortune cookies somehow. Ooh. So, <laughs> All right, it says, you will think this food is Chinese. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I get it. Now, going into this, I have to admit that I'm probably not the best person to present this story because as an atheist and a humanist, I feel like it's a moral imperative that you make your corpse as useful as you can when you die. You yeah. got to stop saying that when they ask you if you're okay to sit in the exit row, Noah. I've told you this before. <laughs> okay, that's an audible yes and, Eli. Technically, that counts. I support. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, so, I've yeah, done but... more for the black community than Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln and yes. Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, but look, you're you're not in your body anymore because you're dead right and given how useful human cadavers are in terms of research and surgical practice and sometimes harvestable organs it feels downright criminal to just set that shit on fire so your fucking family has something to put in an urn like you know the last physical act of my body is going to be add to global warming so other kids can't play with my toys fuck all that so in a sense liberating corpses marked for cremation seems like an act of like noble civil disobedience except that the suspects made like $53 million off of it, and that That's feels way more crimey. Mm, not to me. Boost the economy, and we're recycling corpses. If anything, I'm more <laughs> in now. Yeah, I'm more in. I'm all in about having a science lab, you know, harvest my organs or whatever, but it still ends with everything getting burned if that happens. <laughs> like, it's not going to be very helpful, whatever you try to harvest. Holy shit. Chris, look at this liver. Look at it. Look at how big it is. Take a picture of me with the fish for my... <laughs> okay, that just lit on fire right away. We didn't even have a lot of scotch in there. But yeah, so apparently this has been going on for a while. The Shenqi Osteorad Biomaterials Company and the Sichuan Hengpu Technology Company are accused of receiving more than 4,000 illegally acquired bodies between 2015 and 2023. And, and, and this wasn't a case like they found, you know, two greedy funeral home operators. These bodies came from at least seven provinces and 12 different locations. And there are at least 75 suspects that have been charged. So, yeah, so like, basically, people would come in and they'd be like, I want Granny cremated. And then they'd get back an urn full of ash you know, from the fucking backyard grill or whatever. And these guys would sell Granny to a biomaterials company to be turned into bone grafts. Which is decidedly the more moral thing to do than the nothing they were hoping no, for. No, it is. I will not be budged on this. I won't budge you. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love it if people weren't stupid about the magical significance of a corpse. But barring that... Lying to stupid people seems like the move, right? 
Mm. The secret profit is bad, though. I don't like that. Yeah, right. Like if, if somehow the family could get the money, I'd be 100% fine with No, look, it's worth emphasizing here that like every major corporation in China, the two biomaterial firms at the heart of this thing have strong government ties. They're, like, they're not exactly state-owned, but they're certainly not not state-owned, which is probably why reports about this are being removed from state TV like within hours of them first airing and conversations about it are being restricted on Chinese social media either because the government doesn't want to feed into the organ harvesting rumors or because they don't want to fuck up a good source of harvestable organs. Either way, the news blackout certainly isn't making them less complicit. I hope they're stealing organs. They can steal mine. Some kid at Rutgers is going to get a B on me anyways. You might as well fucking... <laughs> okay, but hopefully in the drama department instead of the biology department. <laughs> oh, there you go. Put that in the will. Make sure it's, got, it's going to the drama Fuck, department. yeah. Eli's skull spends eternity having Shakespeare badly monologued at it. I fucking love it. <laughs> we'll find out if there's ghosts. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know what you're probably thinking. What does a dead Chinese person go for these days? Oh, so Noah can ask it on air, but it's, I can't. It's all about the timing, Eli. I keep telling you that. Well, weirdly enough, the stories I found on this had very detailed information about that. It, it seems like on the low end, you're talking about 1400 bucks or about 10000 yuan. Uh, on the high end, more like three grand. Uh, and as near as I can tell, by the way, the difference isn't in the quality of the corpse so much as the skill of the negotiator. Really? Uh, also, Sliding yeah. across the table is weird at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you use that rolly thing that goes in and out of the crematorium. Oh, uh, yeah, thing. right. No, it makes it way easier. <laughs> um, so, but there's also this weird detail in the stories that I could find about this, and I couldn't find very many. Um, they all said that the, the staff at Shangxi Osteo Red was also charged with mistreating cadavers, but I couldn't find any details on what that meant. And that is not something you should leave to my goddamn imagination, people. <laughs> I think it's that you have to fold them properly, like the American flag. You have to do that. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's just better for the negotiation part because it's sloppy obviously. otherwise. Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And in slur story news, Secretary of State candidate for the state of Missouri, Valerie Gomez, came in sixth place in her primary this week, but she went out doing what she loved, hurling slurs at the people who disagree with her. Uh, Miss Gomez has merited mention on our shows a couple of times now. Listeners will remember us talking about her burning gay books with a flamethrower stunt <laughs> yep. and then shooting a machine gun to prove that her car wasn't gay. That's that's not exaggerating <laughs> yep. at nope, all. That's, that's what what exactly what happened. Well, uh, we didn't mention it, but as the campaign continued, she got more and more honest. Yeah, people who say they want honesty in their politicians haven't met enough politicians, I think. Yes, exactly. So, uh, responding to the transphobic hysteria at the Olympics in a video that mistakenly identified a female boxer as trans and used the F-slur multiple times, she said, quote, these F-slurs should get their own F-slurs category. Jesus. Because before, yes. if a man hit a woman, it used to land him in jail. Now it gets you a gold medal at the Olympics. Let me remind you, there's no such thing as a chick with a dick. Oh, Keep God. women's oh, sports Jesus. female. End quote. You know how you remember how your mom used to tell you two wrongs don't make a right. Well, it turns out if you cram eleven of them together in a sentence, that doesn't make a right either. So yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'd love to take you seriously, uh, Valerie, but you drive a gay car, so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So, as you can imagine, uh, Ms. Gomez took her loss with the same level-headed good spirit as she has run the rest of her campaign, posting a video on Twitter saying, quote, That was the most fun I've ever had. I put the fear of God in these groomers, pedophiles, and corrupt politicians. The we most did it all. fun? What do you do in your spare time? <laughs> yeah, right. Drive a gay car, obviously. Do a fucking puzzle, lady. Yeah, we did it all without holding a single fundraiser. Yes, I lost this election, but I'm young, beautiful, are you, and rich as fuck. End quote. Uh, side note, I, I don't know if she's rich as fuck, but I do know that she parted ways with her employer thanks to her rhetoric, so uh, we'll see how long that last part lasts. Yeah, better update that resume. So you, you could put top 10 finisher... Out of eight in the GOP prime <laughs> <laughs> state of Missouri. All right, so here's how bad that video was. At one point, she used that very same anti-gay slur to describe all the people who don't like her, and Eli didn't even think to bring that up. Like that did, didn't, no. wasn't room in his story for mm -hmm. that. Either way, always glad to see a bigot defeated. Perhaps next time she'll run a campaign that's less, in the words of the candidate, weak as fuck. <laughs> and finally tonight. In 
No, the other Black Hawk Down news. Fantastic. <laughs> Despite what he claimed at a press conference last week, Donald Trump was not in a helicopter that almost crashed with former San Francisco mayor Willie Brown in 1990. Turns out Trump was thinking of any other black person. Yeah. Ah, helicopter incident did happen, but it was with Nate Holden, a former California state senator. Trump was flying with one black person all the way, and then all of a sudden he made a turn and it became a different black person. I think somebody <laughs> should look into that. <laughs> Yeah, so but the, the takeaway here is that if you're black and you would like a free helicopter ride, tell Donald Trump you're Ben Carson. There is no <laughs> fucking way he's going to know the difference. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so it all started when Trump got a question about Mr. Brown and Kamala Harris having a past relationship. And Trump responded by telling the story of taking a helicopter ride with Brown that had to make an emergency landing. Brown heard about that claim, and he did an interview later that day explaining that what the fuck are you talking about? I feel like I'd remember that and also remember some insane reason that I'd ever want to spend time with Donald Trump. He also added that everyone clearly hates Donald Trump, including people who service helicopters, so there's no way I'd ever fly with him. <laughs> what Heath's saying is that firefighter deserved it, everybody. Oh, That's what Heath is saying. But, but, but the important thing is that Trump has confused one person for another, so... I feel like it's time for every existing media outlet to run wall-to-wall coverage about how he's mentally unfit to be president for like <laughs> 17 solid days. Really, that should be literally the only news story every time you look at any news store. So let's, let's keep it fair. Okay, yeah. but careful. They might like do that and then do better than they are. And, ah, I hate, yeah. hate to see it. So. Oh, dude, if, he, if they lose him now, they'd have to replace him with Vance. <laughs> oh, and then he would run third party anyways. Oh, it's so, it sure this election's would. getting better and better. Sure <laughs> so... Following the interview, during which Willie Brown refuted the story, the New York Times wrote an article about it, and they guessed that maybe Trump had confused the name Willie Brown with former California governor Jerry Brown. The next day, Trump decided to double down and insisted that Willie Brown had obviously forgotten that time they almost died in a helicopter crash together. Trump posted the following on Truth Social, quote, two failing New York Times in quotes, reporters, questioned my story about a forced landing of a helicopter with Willie Brown. First of all, it was in New Jersey, not California. And it was Willie Brown. It was not former Governor Jerry Brown. So far, they're about as accurate as they are with their other stories about me. And, okay, that, that part's actually true, but not how Trump meant it. <laughs> he continued, Willie is just angling for another ride in Trump's jet. Helicopter in parentheses after Is that jet. him correcting himself? He corrected himself <laughs> in a text. I think he's doing voice to text, and that was Tyler yelling in the background. Helicopter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here's the end of the quote. But now Willie doesn't remember? No. He remembers. <laughs> end quote. Jesus. Trump starts drawing Willie Brown's face on Nate Holden with a Sharpie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Trump also threatened to sue the New York Times over the article. Yeah. He posted a long screed about how they lied about his dealings with Russia. Those those are the ones that were exactly detailed in the Mueller report, to be clear. Mm -hmm. And he added, why can't the radical left failing New York Times write accurately and fairly on me? See following truth, end quote. <laughs> Sorry, he's positing that the guy who said he never rode with him and hates him is doing it for the chance to ride with him. That's yeah, some right. 11th dimensional chess right mm -hmm. there. It's confusing. And what was C following? Is that like C note below, but like C the concept right. of following? Yes, truth? yes. C following tweet, like because it's the truth social. Oh, it's a, God, you, that is what. Jeez, I hate yeah. it so much. Okay, so. Well, they're failing real bad. Everybody lost a shitload. Oh of money. yeah, yeah, so much they, money. They they were like they, they they came out this quarter and they're like, yeah, huge loss in revenue, and we're like, loss from <laughs> yeah. from there. <laughs> How do you lose? Yeah, spice? rough. So later that day, Trump called up the New York Times, and I'm assuming he was like, "Hello, New York Times. This is Donald Trump. I'd like to speak to the person who handles." Uh, angry yelling about a potential lawsuit. So mm -hmm. the receptionist put him on hold. And after somebody at the Times won 
I'm assuming a big Rochambeau tournament, oh, that person yeah, no, gleefully got on the line with Donald Trump and got to hear the angry yelling about flight records that would prove the story about Willie Brown. Except by then, Nate Holden, again, the person who is actually on the flight with Trump, had confirmed the stupid bigot mix-up by Trump. Just for the record, Willie Brown is about five foot five and bald. And Nate Holden is six foot one and has a full head of hair. For fuck's sake. And sadly, they're both not Kobe Bryant, despite what Trump <laughs> <laughs> What Heath is saying is Kobe Bryant deserved it, everybody. I don't think that's, that's, what, what, he that's what he's getting at. I didn't say one way or the other. And on that note, <laughs> I hate the Lakers. We're going to close it out. <laughs> thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who like us and follow us on all the various internets. Please keep You're doing welcome. that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new generous donors, you will be complimented by name next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. But that whole, like, you can't do it because your siblings can't also do it thing held me back from a ton of shit when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever heard you can't do it. I don't really understand that. <laughs> yeah, I bet you I haven't. Yeah. Theoretically. <laughs> but, yeah. What's that word that everyone's always using? I never remember it. No, no right. You yeah. got to. Someone must have said that to you. Yeah. Kinda I can't imagine. I think I'm a healthy only child, too. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved.